Red is uh, delivering in cooperation with our partners, APRIGF, but also Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Communications and the Arts. Took some time. Uh, of course, with great uh, support from AUDA um, for the logistics. And with that, um, I won't take a lot of your time. Uh, we would like to focus firstly on the value of this parliamentary track and the cooperation. And we have some wonderful lineup of speakers to introduce that concept. So let me start firstly uh, with an online speaker. Mr. Chengetai Masangwa is the head of office of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum Secretariat. Chengetai, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Anya. Uh, I assume you can all hear me, correct? We can, yes. Uh, okay, great. Um, excellencies, honorable members of parliament and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for joining us today for the first regional parliamentary track organized alongside the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Asia Pacific um, IGF organizing committee for organizing a successful meeting. Greetings from Geneva. Unfortunately, I could not be with you in Brisbane, but I'm glad to be able to join you virtually. Good internet governance begins at home. Parliamentarians are the ones that forge, pass and adopt legislation at the national level. Our aim is to assist members of parliament navigate several key internet digital policy issues and also foster interparliamentary dialogue and dialogue amongst stakeholder groups. A dedicated roundtable discussion for parliamentarians was first organized at our annual IGF meetings in Berlin. That was in 2019. The IGF has since developed its activities and is holding sessions not only at the annual meeting, but also alongside the regional IGFs to deliver action-oriented outputs by including more parliamentarians into the discussions. Last year, there was the launch of the African Parliamentary Network on Internet Governance, APNIG, during the parliamentary symposium that took place alongside the African IGF in Malawi. This year, we had dedicated parliamentary session at the European IGF, Eurodig, held in Finland, and with the IGF 2023 taking place in Japan this year, we wanted to focus on the Asia Pacific region with its very first regional parliamentary track. The theme of the annual IGF is the internet we want, empowering all people. And in the lead up to our meeting in Japan, it was important for us to include an Asia Pacific perspective on how parliamentarians can contribute to the internet we want. Earlier today, we have had a dedicated session amongst the youth and parliamentarians from the region to explore how youth perspective can be best included in the policy making process. The roundtable discussion then highlighted the role of parliamentarians in contributing to current and future internet governance processes, a hot topic in the community lately. And today's sessions are dedicated to both the technical community and to parliamentarians as an attempt to bring you together and bridge potential gaps between technology and legislations. Tomorrow, we will set the scene for the annual IGF and its main parliamentary track by including an Asia Pacific perspective. The Vice Minister of Internal Affairs and Communications from the IGF 2023 host country, Japan, who is also a member of the Japanese parliament will welcome you all by providing remarks and by letting you know more about the main sessions at the parliamentary track in Kyoto. We are excited to hear from all speakers, member of parliaments and government representatives present with us today and tomorrow. Before the deputy secretary, Mr. Richard Windayer takes the floor, I would also like to extend my gratitude to Veronica, Ian and Dale from the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Communications and Arts. They are present in the room. And of course, to the Australian government for providing extensive support to make the regional parliamentary track happen. 
I wish you all exciting sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chengatai, for your remarks. And uh, moving now from Geneva back to our wonderful hosts here. And uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome for some welcoming remarks, Mr. Richard Windier, Deputy Secretary, Communications and Media Group, Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Communications and the Arts. Richard, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to begin uh, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we are meeting and pay respects to elders uh, past and present and welcome any um, Indigenous people joining us for this meeting today. Um, I'm very impressed that we've managed to give the full name of the department three times already. It is a, it is quite a mouthful. It is the longest named department in the Commonwealth, uh, in the Commonwealth government. So well done. Um, yes, I'm a deputy secretary looking after, in a sense, the communications uh, part of that within which sits um, uh, the Australian government's involvement in both internet governance issues and in, um, ITU issues. Uh, you know, so the telecommunications and internet international. Um, dimensions. Um, I would like to th thank the IGF and other organisers for inviting us uh, to speak here at the um, at the uh, regional Asia Pacific Regional IGF parliamentary track. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome to those that have come to Brisbane, and welcome to those that are participating uh, online. This. Parliamentary track caps off what's been a um, great week of events to discuss digital and internet related matters, starting with NetThing, Australia's national IGF initiative, and then the Pacific IGF earlier in the week, to the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, um, uh, which wraps up today. And I congratulate everyone on staging um, such a successful program. I'm sorry I missed it. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was up in Papua New Guinea uh, with um, a, a Pacific ICT ministers meeting, um, which I think was island nations of the, um, of the Pacific. Um, this year, it's obviously especially important to bring together regional multi-stakeholder community like this with the global IGF to be held in Kyoto in October, and which is the first time in 10 years that the global IGF has been hosted in the Asia Pacific region. Um, IGF has a key role in the multi-stakeholder community as a place for all stakeholders to discuss digital policy issues and support the community's work in building capacity across underserved regions and in giving a voice to underserved regions. It seems to me what's really important here is that this thing called the internet can't be done to people, it needs to be done with people. So participation in forums such as the IGF is important for governments and for other stakeholders, important for building networks and relationships across the region, for highlighting issues which are most important to our communities and for making sure perspectives are represented in global internet governance conversations. This parliamentary track is a great opportunity uh, for parliamentarians and government officials to come together, share experiences and discuss the digital policy issues affecting our region. A recurring theme in our discussions here and in the global IGF in October will be the significant events coming up in the next few years that have the potential to change how the internet is governed into the future. This includes the Global Digital Compact, expected to be agreed in September 2024 at the Summit of the Future which will consider principles and developments in internet governance that will support us in addressing digital challenges. And also WISIS Plus 20, which will review the outcomes of the World Summit on the Information Society 20 years after they were agreed. The establishment of the IGS, IGF itself was a key WISIS outcome um, and the Plus 20 review will consider the continuation of its mandate beyond 2025. These processes have potential to reshape how the digital space is governed going forward. And it's critical that the Asia Pacific interests are represented in these discussions. These events are also a chance to advocate for an internet that will best support the attainment of the sustainable development goals. The SDGs cannot be achieved without the internet. And it's a critical, it is a critical enabler for, develop, for sustainable development. It unlocks human capabilities, 
provides access to critical public goods and services and is the basis upon which emerging digital economies will grow. Of course, as we know, it can also um, unfortunately be used to harm in some circumstances. And I think another important thing that events like this offer is a chance to consider how we make sure that the benefits are not overwhelmed by the harms and making sure the benefits and value are shared and distributed um, fairly across, uh, across the community. Australia is strongly committed to the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance and will continue to advocate for all stakeholders, including governments, to work together on an equal footing. The inclusion of the technical community, academia, and end users of the internet in the internet governance forum, such as this IGF, helps us to consider complex challenges from multiple perspectives and address them effectively. I'm looking forward to the discussions over the next day and a half. These discussions will look at a number of important digital policy issues that affect each of our communities, such as the intersection between policy and technology, AI regulation, data governance and misinformation, all issues that we in Australia and the Australian government is having to turn its mind to. I hope these sessions will provide an opportunity to build our collective understanding of digital policy making, exchange good practices and discuss how governments contribute to building the internet that we want. So once again, welcome to everyone here in Brisbane. I look forward to a productive um, and useful discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. And uh, as I said, we're staying uh, with our hosts and I would like now to give the floor to Mr. Edmund Chang, Chief Executive Officer of .Asia. Thank you, Anya, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, let me start by thanking the government of Australia and the IGF Secretariat for coordinating to, to actually make this event happen. Um, Richard just mentioned the longest um, name of uh, the ministry. I thought that the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum <laughs> was probably equally long as an APR IGF. Um, Asia ourselves is uh, very much honored to serve as the secretariat for the AG APR IGF. See, it's very, you know, <laughs> not easy to, to say out. Um, but uh, what it is, it is really most exciting to see that um, this year we have for the first time a parliamentary track alongside the APR IGF. Asia's own vision is about collaboration among the Asia Pacific community, and it is especially great to see that um, for APR, APR IGF 2023, we also have the Pacific IGF, NetThing, and this parliamentary track all happening in Brisbane this, year, uh, this week together. Of course, as a great tradition of the APR IGF since its beginning, we also have the youth IGF held jointly. Uh, we are particularly keen to see a growing network of active participants for the APAC Youth Leaders Dialogue, which actually feeds into the youth track of the uh, global IGF, much like this parliamentary track feeds into the parliamentary track of the global uh, IGF. It is uh, especially exciting to see that um, this parliamentary track actually has also taken advantage of the co-location of the YIGF to engage in a dialogue with the youth earlier this morning. Um, the Asia Pacific YIGF is one of the first youth IGF initiatives around the world. And at Dot Asia, we're particularly proud that our net mission program, which is the longest standing youth internet governance program around the world, helped actually start the APYIGF uh, 14 years ago. The network effect actually of bringing these different uh, uh, stakeholders and components of the IGF movement together is I believe very important because it allows not only for the cross-pollination of ideas and information, but also the ability to form relationships between the people, trust, is a very important glue for the global multi-stakeholder internet governance community and relationships are important for building that trust. Whether it is the, the emerging technologies, the, the challenges brought forth by AI, by, uh, by, by big data, or the increasing pressure really for, for governments to, to regulate and, and legislate the, the trust in the relationship between uh, and among the internet governance community around the world 
will be crucial in ensuring that we can maintain an open and interoperable internet that is not fragmented. That is where the global multi-stakeholder process is critical and the multi-stakeholder model must evolve to include parliamentarians and legislators as stakeholders, uh, which is why I very much believe that the introduction of the parliamentary track into the IGF family uh, really is going to be, continue to be uh, an, a, a very important component for the evolving multi-stakeholder internet governance ecosystem. So uh, with that, I, I really look forward very much to the discussions here at the parliamentary track at APR IGF and um, also the continued participation by legislators and uh, uh, parliamentarians around the region in the global IGF movement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edmund. And I think um, after we listened to Cengeta, Richard and Edmund, we've heard some very important messages, which are setting a very good foundation uh, for us to move immediately to a discussion panel. Very grateful that uh, all our three speakers will dedicate some time and stay with us in case you would have maybe later some questions and participate in the panel. But with that, I would like to uh, give floor back to the moderator of the next panel, Ms. Silvia Cadena, Head of Programs and Partnerships with APNIC Foundation, to also announce the uh, next speakers. Thank you, Silvia. <laughs>